Hi there, my name is Etra with Mind Studios, and this is part 4 of our tutorial series all about making your own game in Universal Fighting Engine. If you haven't seen the overview video in the top right, I highly recommend you watch that to learn about how to follow along with this series. Today we're going to make 3 custom stages and add them to our example game. We'll go over how to load stages through prefabs, load stages through scenes, how to create custom camera options for each stage, and even how to animate simple stage elements. To start off, let's see what we have for stages so far. If I load up our game, we'll see we have two identical looking stages called Training Room Prefab and Training Room Scene. To find more information about these stages, we can go to the heart and soul of our project, the UFE Global Config, and let's actually give our game a name now. Then scroll down to stages and we can take a look at our example training stages. Here we can see the name, type of stage it is, music, boundaries, and screenshot of the stage. For a prefab based stage, we can actually just click the prefab here to be teleported to right where that prefab is located. In this Training Room 2D folder, we see the model for our Training Room, the Prefab, and the Scene version of the Training Room. If we open up the Prefab here, we'll see that just like any other Prefab, it is a collection of game objects that we load into UFE. We have the stage model, we have some lights, and we have this plane in the center here. When we make a new stage, oh, let me flip gizmos on. When we make a new stage, we're gonna use this plane to check if our characters are standing at Y0. They always stand on top of Y0, and that's where this plane is located. They stand at Y0 with or without this plane, or wherever the whole stage is moved. So if I move this up and then run the game, we'll see that our characters are still going to always stand at Y0, regardless of where the stage is located. Now, as long as you keep in mind the fact that they're always going to stand on top of Y0, we can make whatever stage we want in UFE. So to start, let's make our own prefab-based stage. For my first example, I'll grab the free Snaps prototype pack, sci-fi slash industrial, from the asset store to get a good base. Then, I can find the asset from the package manager and import it in. Once it's imported, I'm going to make a folder for it in stages, and then make a place for the source assets. Once the assets have a nice place to be, I'm going to hop in the asset pack and find the example scene. Now before I edit anything about this, I'm actually going to just click Control D here and then make a backup of this scene. Because I'm basically going to destroy this main stage here. I was looking at this earlier, and I kind of want to make this area right here our stage. I think the easiest way to go about that is to get rid of all these other objects first, and then work from there. And then I'm going to move this light over to the center a bit more, and things look mostly good. But if we highlight our room here, we'll see that we have all these green highlights, and these green highlights represent different colliders on these objects. So usually box colliders and mesh colliders. Those colliders check if characters or objects collide with them constantly, and since UFE only checks if the characters are standing at Y0 and doesn't care about any of these colliders, we can remove these colliders so they don't drain computer resources. So to do that, we can just type in T for type and find all objects with box colliders. Uh, box collider, select them all. Click here, remove them, and do the same for mesh colliders. Perfect. After that, we're going to try to make this one big prefab. And to do that, we've got to go here, make a new empty game object, and we'll call this, uh, let's see, Battle Dome Base. And once we have that at 0, 0, 0, we can grab all the other objects, put them under that base, and see how that wraps up nicely. We can take our stages here, 
go to the Battle Dome, and drag this right into the resources. And we have a prefab of all the assets we want to use. Now this prefab is not our stage. To make the actual stage, we should have the training room as a scaling reference so we don't make anything too big or too small. So I'll hop over to stages, training room 2D, and make a duplicate of this prefab here. Call it battle dome and bring it where it needs to be. When we open it up, you'll see it clearly isn't the battle dome, but this base is where I recommend you drag all your stage objects and prefabs in. We can use this plane to help us see where Y level zero is, and this blue arrow here always points to the back of the stage. I'll drag in our battle dome assets here, then scale this to a proper size. We also want to take a quick look at the red arrow that pops up when we select the plane, because right here is where our characters are going to walk back and forth on. I actually want our characters over here, so I'm going to move our base back a bit. That's much better, and now I'm going to make this a bit bigger. It's hard to edit anything in this, so what you can actually do is right click and select unpack prefab completely. This no longer makes it a prefab, but since it's in our actual battle dome stage, that doesn't matter as much. And now I'm gonna extend the wall a little bit. When everything is scaled how you want it to be, you can grab the original training room object and turn off its mesh renderer so it's invisible. And we can get rid of these other lights that we don't need. And now I'll make our one light a bit brighter to compensate. Finally, once our prefab is done, we have to go back over to global settings and add it to our stage selection. I recommend just grabbing the training room prefab, duplicating that thing settings, and filling in the information properly. Make sure you drag in the correct prefab. In our case, it's going to be the stage battle dome. I'll use my photo editing software to snap a screenshot and add a nice preview here for our battle dome. Now we're almost perfect. Our characters are at Y0 and that stops them from falling down. But how do we stop our characters from walking off the screen when going left or going right? You may remember that we have boundary settings in the stage select. I can move our characters to the left and right here, and it looks like they are reaching that border. But don't be fooled, they aren't reaching the stage border, they are simply reaching the maximum player distance, which we'll talk about later. But we can tell this because if I move both characters over to one direction, you can see it is a while until we find the real edge, which is through the wall here. So if I want to adjust this, we can actually just grab the global settings, and like many things in UFE, we can edit it in real time. So I'll grab the battle dome edge here, and we'll kind of move that until Jamo is out of the wall. Oh, that's wrong boundary. There we go, and we'll mirror that on the other end. Now that our first stage is complete, we can move on to the next. And for that next stage, I wanted to create a level based on game dev YouTuber Bargy's colorful FPS game, Mushy. Bargy thankfully provided me the assets to make this stage, so all I have to do is duplicate the training room prefab again, add in my assets, move it to the location I want, delete these lights I don't need, hide the training room, and add the stage to our stage list as a prefab. However, if I run the game, we can see that our stage definitely doesn't look colorful. Actually, we can't see much of anything because our camera doesn't render objects that are too far away. To fix this, we can go to our camera and adjust our clipping plane range until we see our background objects. Also, we can go to the global settings, go to the camera in here, and increase our field of view a bit. This is definitely better, but it sure isn't mushy. And since we want our battle dome and mushy to have different skyboxes and lighting, what we need to do is load this mushy stage 
through a separate scene. To do that, let's go over to the example training room scene. As you can see, it is just an empty scene with the training room and more lighting. So to make our own scene-based stage for Mushy, I'm going to jump in its folder, right-click, create, new scene, drag our prefab in here, and get rid of the other objects. Now that our Mushy stage is in its own scene, we can give it its custom lighting. To start, I'll download the free Boxphobic Skyboxes pack that Bargy used for Mushy, and apply the new skybox to our scenery by dragging it in. To get rid of this blue hue, we can adjust the environment lighting for the scene by going to Window, Rendering, Lighting, and changing the environment lighting here. Now to actually load this scene instead of the mushy stage prefab, we need to go back to Global Settings, find its stage, and then switch this over to a scene file loading method. For the scene path, you can find exactly what it is by going over to your stage and just clicking it. So right here, it is assets, UFE, demos, shared assets, stages, mushy, mushy stage scene dot unity. In order to run the game, we have to hop back to the demo fighter 2D scene, but when we do, Everything looks quite a bit worse, if I'm being honest. We're actually given a nice little error here, which tells us exactly what's wrong. It says our scene is invalid, or not part of the scene's array. To fix this, we need to go to File, Build Settings, and drag in our scene stage here. This tells Unity that we want to have this scene as part of our game. With that added, everything should work great. All we need to do from here is add some post-processing, and these games would look identical. You can find tutorials for Unity post-processing all over the place, but you can only learn about UFE here. So instead of post-processing, what I'm going to focus on last here is making a final stage that has custom camera positioning and animations. This last stage is going to be based on game dev YouTuber Danny's Crab Game. You may have noticed a theme here, and I've just decided to turn our demo game into a YouTube indie dev crossover thing that you'll be able to play at the end of the series. Since we want this stage to also have custom lighting, I'll make sure this is a scene-based stage. First, I'm going to assemble the prefab with the assets I have. Then, I'll drag that into a new scene and adjust its lighting. Finally, I'll add the stage to my global settings and give it a nice screenshot. At the end, remember to add your stage to build settings so your stage will function. Now this stage functions, but I'd really like to see these three background objects on screen at all times. And to do that, I could just edit camera options again, but if I do this, then that's going to edit the camera options for every single stage. I just change the mushy and battle dome stage by sliding the slider. So I only want camera settings to apply to this specific stage. I'd also like the timers in the back to show the game timer, and I'd like the statue to spin around. Now, all that may seem like a lot, but we can actually make a custom camera for every stage and animate this stage by just making two simple scripts. Let's go into our crab game scene and grab the parent object real quick. Click add component, and we're gonna make a new script and we're going to call it set camera settings. We'll get rid of these example functions here and write a different one that's called by Unity. This awake function will run whatever code is in it when our new stage is loaded. In our case, the code will change the camera values in our UFE global settings when our new stage is loaded. We basically want to save custom camera setting values up here and then apply them to our camera when the stage is loaded in. I'm going to type a lot of public values here and make each of them equal to their default UFE values. Now, in order to change our global settings to equal all these values, we need to type in UFE.config.camera options and make each specific game setting option equal their corresponding variable. If you don't want to type all this, the script is in the description below to just copy and paste. Now if I lost you in this part, don't worry, the way this actually works is simple. We can go on over to the crab game base here, 
and we have all these camera settings. Basically, whatever I set the settings on the script to is what our camera is going to be when the project loads. So in my case, I want to increase the clipping range, raise the camera's position, disable always looking at players, increase the field of view, disable zooming in on the players, and increase the distance players can move away from each other. Now when we load the crab game stage, all those settings are automatically applied to the camera. The one problem with this is that if a stage doesn't have this script, it will just have the settings of the last stage that was opened. So for example, if we head over to the Battle Dome, you'll see we have the Crab Game camera settings. To fix this, all we have to do is put the set camera settings scripts on the Battle Dome, and then when the Battle Dome loads, it will load whatever the default camera settings are. So just make sure to put this script on each stage in your game, and everything should be good. Now in the Crab Game stage, we can now always see the statue and timers, but currently, they're not doing anything interesting. To fix that, we can add another script to the Crab Game stage called Crab Game Stage Manager. For the timers, I'll make two slots for text objects. Then, I'll set the value of those text objects to be equal to the battle timer. To get that, we go to UFE, grab the battle GUI, which we'll talk about next episode, grab its script, and get the timer text from it. We'll put our two timers in these text slots I made, and ta-da, our timers are working. If you want to animate other objects in your scene, you can research Unity's animator. But for simple stuff like spinning an object every few seconds, I use the tweening engine Lean Tween. And you can look into either of those to make background objects move autonomously. What I have here is a small script that makes the statue turn around every few seconds. And with that, we have a custom camera for each stage, and we have our stage background animating with UFE elements. We've got an extra video here that talks about 3D stages if you're making a 3D fighter, but if not, then next episode we'll talk about how to customize the title screen, character select, and battle GUI, which is the thing with the health bars, super meter, and round timer. Anyway, I'll see you there. Bye.